Gran's brow furrowed. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. A faint electronic sound floated in the air. A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Luca's mouth felt dry. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring, a sort of natural barrier for the impatient.
volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title, Introduction to Melatology. He gestured to the shelves. The entire top level of the library was devoted to comics, most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser, revered spin-offs. Mycological Phosphorescence. corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular Biology and the Chemistry of Mitosis. Oh, the cobs I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. any actual new additions. Simply, a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Often, giving her little time to establish any real connections. She would tell you she prefers it that way. Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. Thank you. 
Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Well, time to bust out the tickles. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tisha's arms. Tears began to form in Tisha's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of laughter. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Chapter 4 The Best Policy Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her, but finding Rolla was his primary concern. <laughs> Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. Mm -hmm. 
Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. <laughs> In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. Roxy drew herself up. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. Luca motioned to the phone booth. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncreed. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. behind those eyes. A deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rolo, maybe he could help. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. Creed's shoulders slumped. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. With a firm 
come shove. Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule, plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Wait. No. This isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Well, time to bust out the strange. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. At the sight of Iggy taunting Beck, something in Luca snapped. Iggy's smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Iggy's clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. The person at the warehouse the strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? glanced toward Luca. <laughs> Rolo was safe. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4. Our Harvest Awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. <laughs> 